today I'm continuing my series on solving math, astronomy and astrophysics Olympiad questions. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so this is the question that we have here and this is from the IOAA 2019 theory paper and it's question two as we can see there. Okay, perfect. So the question says, a. Eddington and F. Dyson from Princip and C. Davidson and A. Cromelin from Sobral, Brazil Apologies if I've pronounced anything wrong there measured the deflection of light coming from stars apparently very close to the sun during the total solar eclipse in 1919 The deflection was found to agree with a the theoretically predicted value of 1.7 arc seconds A light ray or photon which passes the sun at a distance d is deflected by an angle given by this formula here the present day accuracy of the VLBI, very long baseline interferometry technique, in the radio wavelength is 0.1 mass, or milli arc second. Is it possible to detect a deflection of radio photons from a quasar by A, Jupiter, B, the Moon? Estimate the angle of deflection in both cases and mark yes or no on the answer sheet. Okay, so it's quite a long question, and it's typical with astrophysics and astronomy questions in the IOAA, uh, if you haven't seen it before, that the questions are typically quite long and that's because they have some information in there that's needed. The first thing that we can know is, the first line is obviously some incredible people that have measured the deflection of light. So we've been told that we've measured this deflection of light that's coming from stars that are apparently very close to the sun. Okay, so that's, that's key, that's, I'm going to jot that down as just number one, that's quite an important thing. And this is during the total solar eclipse in 1919. And we're told that the deflection found agrees with theoretically predicted values of 1.7 arc seconds. Okay, and we're going to label that number two. Okay, because these are the two important things that we need in this question. Now, it goes on to say that we have this formula for a light ray or photon that passes the sun at distance d. And it gets deflected by this angle here. Now, to illustrate what's happening in this question, I've got a nice little diagram here. And this is basically saying, it's kind of describing what's happening with this light ray that we see that passes the sun at distance d. So we have this distance d here. And it gets deflected by this angle here, which we can see in the images here. And we have the apparent position of the stars here. And this is the true position. So essentially what's happening, as it says in the question, is this light that is passing the sun at this distance is getting deflected. And this is kind of a, an illustration of what's happening. I just thought I'd include that just because it's quite a nice illustration so you can kind of wrap your head around what's happening. The first thing is that we have the, the measurements of the light that came from stars apparently very close to the sun was given by this value here. And we're told what the formula is for a light ray at a distance d. Now obviously this is for very close to the sun. So instead of it being a distance d, the distance itself here can be replaced with the radius of the sun. So what we can do is we can say, okay, first thing to note, is for the deflection of light by the sun, we have that the distance must be the radius of the sun and we can substitute this into this formula that we have here and we can find that the angle for the case of apparently very close to the sun so the same as what we've been told in this first section here we can find that angle and that's just going to be 4g the mass of the sun divided by c squared the radius of the sun. And that is from this formula here. Now we are told for this example of stars apparently very close to the sun, the deflection was found to agree with the theoretically predicted value of 1.75 arc seconds. So we can say, well, this equals 1.75 arc seconds. Okay, perfect. Now, what you'll notice is this typically scales as a mass over radius, and that's for the deflector body. So the body that is causing the deflection. So in this case, it's the sun. Okay, so this is, this is the example for the sun itself. Now, we obviously are told to calculate it for Jupiter and the moon. So what we can do is we can say, well, 
if we take the same approach and do the same for Jupiter, then we can get the same. But there's quite a neat little trick that we can do. And what we can say is that the angle for the case of Jupiter divided by the angle for the case of the Sun, which is what we've just calculated, must equal the mass of Jupiter divided by the radius of Jupiter, all divided by the mass of the Sun divided by the radius of the Sun. And the reason this is a handy trick is because it helps us eliminate some quantities like g and c squared from here. Now all this is doing is taking this formula that we have here and input in the case for Jupiter and for the Sun. Okay, and when you divide the two you end up getting cancellation between the 4g and the c squared and all that remains is the mass and the radius here. So we end up with the mass divided by radius for Jupiter and obviously for the Moon example this would be for the Moon and then mass divided by radius for the Sun example. Now we can rewrite this and say that the deflection of radio waves by Jupiter's gravitational field is given by basically what we had before, so mj, rj, whoops, all this divided by m of the Sun and the radius of the Sun. Okay, and that is essentially the answer here. What I'll add is this is for Jupiter and you can do the same for the moon. But first I'll input some values for Jupiter, give you the answer, and then show you the same for the moon example. So we can say, well, okay, so if we just get the examples for what the values are in here, we know that the angular deflection given in the question, this was 1.75 arc seconds, just checking that's right, yep. We have mj given by 1.898 times 10 to the 27, kilograms, RJ given by 69,911 kilometers. The mass of the sun is 1.9891 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. The radius of the sun is 696,340 kilometers. And when you input all of that into this formula here, we end up with the deflection of radio waves by Jupiter's gravitational field is given by 0.0167 arc seconds, which is 16. 0.7 milli arc seconds. Okay, so now what did the question ask? The question said if it's possible to detect a deflection of radio photons by Jupiter. And we have this little sentence here that basically says that the VLBI technique in the radio wavelength is 0.1 mass. So we need it to be greater than 0.1 mass to be detected by this network. And in the Jupiter case, we have it is greater than. 0.1 because this is mass here. So this is greater than 0.1 mass, so therefore detectable. Same for the moon. And obviously you just change these values here and change these values here for the moon. And what we find is 0.0, .0 0.0, .0 two six arc seconds, which is 0.026 milli arc seconds, which is less than 0.1 milli arc seconds. So therefore not, we'll call it observable. What did the question say, the question say, possible to detect, Obs observable, detectable. Yeah. Can't spell, detectable. Okay, now something to note, I stuck to quite specific values for the radius of the sun here, but you could have just got away with saying that that's 7,000. And just for the sake of the video, the radius of the moon is given by 1,734.4 kilometers, and the mass of the moon is given by 7.348 times 10 to the 22. So again, you can just take both of these values here, substitute them into here, 
and obviously change that to the moon uh for this example but yeah really nice question i think the thing with this question was there was quite a lot to unpack but once you tied the pieces together um yeah it was quite nice like this this final part when it says you know the present day accuracy of v vlbi is given by this it, it doesn't actually say well we're going to use this to detect you kind of have to just be intuitive and say, well, if this is asked in the question, it's pretty obvious that that's what we're wanting, the, the network that we're wanting to detect uh, these quasars with. So, yeah, there's some intricacies with this question, but overall, a really, really nice question, and I hope you enjoyed me solving it.